G'day, Australia. And welcome to the first episode of Life Support. The only show that tells each and every one of you exactly how to live your lives. That's right, because only Life Support has all the experts. Yes, my name's Dr Rudy, and I'm a medical doctor, so I'm an expert in all things medical and all things to do with money. I'm Sigourney, and as a modern woman, I'll be teaching you how to make your home beautiful and your husband happy. Two of the most pressing challenges for any woman today. I'm Todd. You see these tools? I'm an expert with every one of them, and by the end of the series, you will be too, if you listen up to Todd's tips. And I'm Penny, I'm 19, and the only degree I've got is in the University of Life, majoring on how to scam the man. Stick with me, and I'll teach you about real life. So, between the four of us, we have all the know-how to fix all your problems. Especially the ones that are becoming a bit of a problem. On tonight's show, I'll be showing you how to secure your stuff when you've got a junkie in the family. And I'll be demonstrating the cheapest way to enjoy cheap travel. And in men's health, I'll be taking a look at an exciting new sex technique I bet you never considered before. Yes, we've got a big show tonight, so let's get started. You know, there's nothing quite like the feeling of satisfaction you get when you finish a do-it-yourself job. But sometimes doing a job like digging out this backyard to put in a swimming pool is just too hard. And we all know that hiring an excavator is just too expensive. But don't panic. Take a tip from Todd. Just bury some human remains in amongst your shifted earth and then report the find to the police. They'll be here with their own excavation crew in no time. Now, I've found that any remains will work in most areas, though you may struggle with indigenous remains in the Northern Territory. But since we're here in South Australia, I've decided to use three child skulls. Yeah, police, please. Oh, g'day, mate. Look, I was just digging around in my backyard and, well, I've dug up some bones and, well, they look human. I think you'd agree that's a pretty satisfying job. A deep end worthy of a diving board and room for a spa down the end. Top tip, Todd. Now, if someone wanted to try this at home, where could they get hold of some human remains? Well, Penny, they just contact their local branch of the United Nations. They're supervising genocide all over the world and can tell you where the closest cleansing is taking place. Thanks, Todd. Another problem solved. Now, if you've got a problem that you can't get your head around or simply want a decision made about your life, why don't you write to Todd and tell him about it? Just send your letters to Tell Todd, SBS, Locked Bag 028, Crow's Nest 1585. But right now, grab your aprons and your craft tools because coming up, it's our modern woman Sigourney. Compassion is an emotion that defines us as women, and there's no better way of showing others you care than wearing one of these. But girls, you don't need to race out to try to find the closest charity accessory store, because with a little patience and a spare 10 minutes, you can feel even prouder of your empathy by making your own AIDS ribbon. Simply measure a length of red ribbon out to a length of about 12 centimetres, then fold this over in half and cut an angle. About 45 degrees should do it, but if it isn't precise, it doesn't matter. Those imperfections let others know you made it yourself. Take the ribbon and bend it into the shape of a bow. Thread a clean needle with a length of thread and then use a simple running stitch until it feels secure. And there you have it. You could buy in bulk and sew an individual ribbon to every outfit that you own, but with fashion being as fickle as it is, you don't know what next season's colour and cause will be. But for now, you can enjoy showing that you care for a fraction of the price. Have you ever wanted to travel to exotic destinations like Uzbekistan, Kurdistan or Iraq? Well, airfares to these parts of the world are expensive. But I've thought up the solution. Just rock up to your nearest refugee centre and say the following. 
Hello, I have traveled across the ocean in a leaky fishing trawler to escape an evil dictator and his, his militia and I have seen my family murdered before my eyes. I have not eaten in four days. I am tired and I am hungry. Please, please help me, please. I guarantee within six hours you'll be on a plane to one of these exciting destinations. Penny will be back with more bright ideas later in the show. Oh, Dr Rudy, I admire her spunk. And look at what she picked up for me on her trip. Well, that's the great thing about holidaying in a war zone. There are so many free souvenirs lying around. Mm, and much more original than the usual ethnic knickknacks. I think it'll make a nice vase. Mm. Are you much of a traveller, Sigourney? Oh, yes. Travel is an important part of being a modern woman. So I've been around the world, all the way to London. I was there for two weeks when I was 21. Speaking of different cultures, we better introduce tonight's Anglophile. So, Dr Rudy, what exactly is the Anglophile? Well, I want to help people the way I wasn't helped when I first came to this country. Oh, did you feel like an outsider, alone and isolated? No, not at all. I fit right in. Felt perfectly at home being able to enjoy all the advantages of being an Anglo. But it took me years to realise I could enjoy the advantages of being an ethnic minority as well. Really? How? Well, that's where my segment Anglo File comes in. I teach Anglo-Australians how to improve their lives by absorbing all the best aspects of multiculturalism. Sounds wonderful. I can't wait. Well, you don't have to, Sigourney, because I'll show you how right now. Hello there. Dr Rudy here with another remedy for all you Anglos struggling to integrate into 21st century Australia. And you know, most of you already have the answer. Your mother-in-law. Why waste that annoying Anglo artefact by letting her rot in a retirement village? Mimic your multicultural neighbours and move her from the nursing home to the front porch of your home. Simply dress her in black for that menacing multicultural curse costing look. Perfect for keeping those elder-respecting graffiti-spraying homeboys in their place. Marvellous, isn't she? She's small and tenacious like a pit bull, but eats less and thanks to a bad hip, doesn't need to be walked. And she's as good as the internet for exchanging neighbourhood information. Especially picking up exotic recipes from the other front porch mm, wrinklings. Lamingtons. Mm. Now you have a babysitter on call every day and a pension check in your mail every fortnight. But most importantly, you can feel like you belong in your own neighbourhood. Has this ever happened to you? It's pretty annoying, isn't it? We've all got them, but sometimes they don't do the job. What we need are bigger, stronger fridge magnets. Or better yet, the biggest, strongest fridge magnet of all. The magnet fridge. Here's how it works. Any ferrous metallic object has magnetic particles inside it. These particles are called ions. A magnet is simply a piece of metal with all the ions pointing in the same direction. Now, if I try and pick up this pin with an ordinary piece of metal, it doesn't work. But if I pass a magnet over the same piece of metal seven times in the same direction, hey presto, we can now pick up our pin. Now, to magnetise our fridge. Like all do-it-yourself jobs, it pays to use the right tools. It's simpler and safer. Nothing moving now. And there's plenty more storage space in your kitchen, and it's a first place to look for your keys. Another top tip from Todd. It's always awful to wake up with a hangover. I never should have mixed my Chardonnays. 
Only one thing makes it worse. And ladies, this is why it pays to network. Air traffic control, please. Hello, Brian. It's Sigourney. Oh, not much. Just lying around in bed. What? Oh, a little bit of satin, a little bit of lace. Oh, I'd love to, too. How about tonight? Oh, what am I thinking? I can't possibly do tonight. I'm exhausted. And there's no chance of me getting any sleep with these darn planes going over my house. What? You'd redirect them over to the western suburbs for me? Oh, you're a doll. You can pick me up at eight. What? Oh, you are naughty. I'll iron it especially for you. Bye. There you go. I've sorted out plans for my evening and my morning with one quick phone call. Which is why you should never discard a phone number, even if you've discarded the man. Well, hello there. We all know that the male of the species is very visually stimulated. The popularity of magazines such as this are a testament to that. But are you getting bored with seeing the same thing every time you relieve the backlog? Well, don't worry. There is a way to keep the images fresh and exciting while you administer some self-relief. Simply wax the back of your hand, and by now probably the palm as well, and attach a set of brightly painted, fully manicured fake fingernails. Now when you look down, you can enjoy the ultimate masturbation fantasy. And remember, don't be limited by your imagination. There's a whole handful of accessories to make you feel like you've slept your way around the world. For instance, the addition of some bright bangles and a simple body wash means tonight you can enjoy the original sin without actually committing it. Some ceremonial henna tattoos will let you experience the formal eroticism of an Indian wedding night. And a set of six inch brass fingernails will have you enjoying a sensual sex tour of Thailand with the upside of living to tell the tale. So enjoy the delights and sights of masturbation while you still can. Because solo sex is still the safest sex. Dr. Rudy says so. Bye now. Masturbation, I mean, everyone does it. It's not something that, you know, we need to hide these days. Oh, I don't masturbate. <laughs> <laughs> well, I've been brought up in sort of like a religious home, so that's like a sin. It's like a normal thing now these days, you know? No, man, I'm not a wanker. I don't masturbate. It's a natural thing, so like, for boys do it, it's all right, but when you like talk about girls doing it, they just don't go there. Well, that was educational, was it? I wasn't listening. You don't approve of masturbation? I don't approve of talking about masturbation, especially on television, especially on a lifestyle program. Really? It's pretty do-it-yourself, though. So, what have we got next, Penny? I mean, as Todd said earlier, there's nothing like the feeling of satisfaction you get when you finish a do-it-yourself job. I just wish there was a few hints for us. So it must be time for viewers' mail. <gasps> Oh, wonderful. Thank you, Penny. Now, as Life Support is a new program, we haven't actually had any letters from viewers yet, but we do genuinely care about you average Australians. So just for this first week, Penny has stolen the Burke's Backyard mailbag. Now, this one is from Mira of Collingwood. <gasps> Love the show. Why, thank you, Mira. I've been married for 30 years. Well done, Mira. And after three decades of abuse, I've decided to leave my husband. Oh no, that's terrible. I'm setting up flat on my own. Do you have any advice? Well, you're in luck, Mira, because tonight Penny's going to show you how to fit out your flat without angering the ancient gods. There's nothing quite like moving into a place of your own. You don't have to argue over fridge space, listen to music you don't like, or come home to find that your flatmate has OD'd on the QT and left you with their share of Foxtel. But the best thing is, you can decorate your new personal space exactly the way you like it. And for me, that means feng shui. Feng shui is an ancient Chinese art used to harness the positive energy in an environment through the placement of objects. 
It encourages harmony, good fortune and longevity. And if my previous two flatmates had let me practice it, they'd probably still be with us. I'm placing this milk crate here to provide a buffer between these opposing energies. The bad vibes coming from Big Brother and the chilled out energy coming from the couch. This represents symmetry and stability, which is why it's also perfect as a coffee table. Music is also important for good feng shui. Enya, her music is synonymous with peace and serenity. When used as bookends, they'll redirect the bad vibes generated by discs in your collection that you know kind of suck. Now there'll still be times when a mate wants to crash on your couch. Fine for a night, but any longer and the slack is going to suck all the energy out of your room. So to avoid this, tell him that as long as he respects your beliefs and sleeps in the proper feng shui position, he can stay as long as he likes. Of course, if he's a little bit on the cute side, you might want to tell him that the proper feng shui position is on the left side of your bed. Hey, where do you think you're going? I said if. And finally, floral arrangements play a pivotal role in the conduction of feng shui energy. But like, for most of us, fresh flowers are an extravagance that we just can't afford. That is, until now. Thanks to the bad karma of male drivers under 25, you can enjoy good feng shui. Simply grab a floral tribute from one of the road's numerous black spot florists. This bunch looks fresh enough to last through an Easter long weekend. Tranquility and harmony in your home every week. Crime has always been a problem, but never before has the amount of break and enters been so high. Now, alarm systems can be costly, and guard dogs, well, one bait and it's bugging. So, today, I'll show you your very own do-it-yourself home protection device. Just get yourself some plain Venetian blinds, then paint a scene of an empty room, void of any furniture or valuables, on the blinds. Now, every time you leave the house, just close the blinds so that from the outside, all an intruder can see is an empty room. Like this one. Looks pretty realistic, hey? Now, for those of you who live in lower socioeconomic suburbs, where the crooks are more desperate and stupid, you may want to go with the more heavy-duty version. Instead of just an empty room, paint some serial murder victims splattered around the place like this one. No one would take a chance in there now. So take a tip from Todd. A trompe l'oeil treatment on your blinds means you won't be robbed blind. And you can really see the difference. I mean, training once a week versus training five times a week. There's nothing more frustrating than dressing up to the nines and hitting the local power player watering hole, only to realise that the men folk are intimidated by your headstrong, unapproachably beautiful appearance. You end up getting ignored all night, and there's no one to make breakfast for in the morning. But I've found a way to look fabulous, feel feminine, and most importantly, non-threatening. Don't let looks be deceiving. Now, all the men in the room, will know that a conversation with you won't be a challenge. And remember, a picture's worth a thousand words, so dressed like this, you won't have to use any, leaving him to enjoy the sounds of submissive silence. Hi, my name's Miles, can I buy you a drink? Hi, so, it's a girl like you, or a place like this. A lot of women dress, you know, dress up like that to make themselves feel good and you know, blah, 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 and then there's an element, like I said, I don't want to generalise at all, but there's an element who will do it, you know, because they're, you know, um, out for the meat market kind of thing. A lot of women are really empowering to themselves these days, I think it might be a bit inhibiting to men. Well, my ploy usually is to kind of make myself, you know, appear to be interesting for a man first. Good on her. She's, uh, you know, if you got it, flaunt it. Do, I do believe in, in, in magic, yeah, and, and I think that... Women are really, really sneaky. Yeah, and they, they do cast spells. It's a 
sad fact that most parents only discover their child as a heroin addict by playing the body bag Lucky Dip Unzip. And by that stage, there isn't much anybody can do about it. But for those parents lucky enough to discover their child is addicted to horse while they still have a pulse, there is a way to help them keep that heart beating longer. Firstly, you have to stop them feeding their habit. So let's start with the video and the TV. Using a simple L-shaped brace, bolt the TV to the cabinet and the cabinet to the floor. So using a fast acting glue, like liquid nails, attach the video and the CD to the cabinet. No way these babies are ending up in the local hock shop. Now a handyman needs to use the right tools, and so does a junkie. So. See what I mean? Replacing all the light fittings in your house with some basic blue lights means your kids won't be able to find a vein in this house ever again. Now, I know this gives the room a cold blue look, but it's better the room than your kid. So take a tip from Todd. A few simple modifications means you can rest assured that this will be the only hammer used in your home. Well, that's it from us for this week. The end of our first show. As good a reason as any to bake a cake. Oh, Sigourney, you spoil us. That's right. So make sure you tune in next week when I'll show you how some simple sewing and fabulous fabric can improve the lives of all Australians. And I'll be bridging the generation gap with Child Watch and introducing parents to a controversial new band with some wicked trademark antics. And I'll be teaching you how to cook an exotic tasting treat. Todd, mate, you in the kitchen. Todd has many talents. Until then, be good to one another. And remember, we're here for you. Good, good night, night, Australia. Australia.